I pursued chemistry because I wanted to be a paleontologist. And I really liked the fact that chemistry had very well-defined rules and how it worked, and you could then predict systems or predict what would happen. So that really got me into chemistry in the first place. I actually think the biggest success is the students that come through the group and, and then go on to bigger and better things. Um, and because they really make me look good, right? Because, you know, they really build the group and start it up and, in the beginning. And then they've, some of them have done great things. Some of them actually run sensing companies and have actually made money out of sensing companies. Though I haven't received any of those profits and I'm a bit irked about that. <laughs> What I'd really like the journal to be is two things. I'd like it to be where you publish the very best science and sensing. So it's your first port of call where you really want to go. Um, the second thing I'd really like it to be is if you're interested in sensing or you want to go into the sensing field, um, you don't know where, to, where do you find the up-to-date information, where do, you find, where do you find those reviews that sort of guide you as to what the right problems are or, or right questions to answer, I want it to be that as well. So I want it to be two things. We see where you get the very best science in sensing, but we also get the best guidance in sensing as to w what to go for. Obviously, great science is what's going to be one of the keys. Um, so it's got to be great science, but then it's also got to address sensing issues. It's not got to be about, I've got this material and, oh, I can apply it to sensing. It's got to be about, here's this challenge in sensing. Here's this We've developed this material that can address this challenge and give us a better performing or a new type of sensor. So it's all about emphasis. comes back to this question of what attracts the editor and that's emphasis. So again I'll come back to that example of, of a material. If you, de if you develop a material and then say it can be used for sensing, well we have a journal for that in ACS that's called Chemistry Materials. You can say the same thing about photonics and you can say the same thing about uh, surface chemistry or, or nanotechnology. But if, you're, if the emphasis of your article is I want to develop, I want to develop a solution for this issue or a, a sensor for this analyte, then that emphasis is all about sensors and that's, that's for us, that's what we want. Some of the areas in the sort of research end that I see is really interesting or really emerging single molecule sensors and taking single molecule devices to quantification, not just one single molecule event but many. Um, and also sing and in the same vein, cellular-based sensors. I think the intracellular sensors, uh, de devices, you know, those protein engineering-based devices that, that cell biologists make are really, really going to have a major impact and they really are going to open up a lot of opportunities for all sorts of other sensing. Um, and then from a more application end, obviously the wearable sensors are, is a really big issue. And, and the th thing that's key there is not that they're wearable. Um, the, the thing that's key there is that they, their sensors are designed to interface with our everyday lives without us knowing anything. So for example, you know, I have this GPS watch on, I will not go for a run without a GPS watch anymore. Not because I, I can't run, but because I don't have my data, right? I don't know how well I did. So, and that's because they've just managed to seamlessly integrate in what I do in everyday life. So that's another big area of um, interest or a big, real hot area. I don't understand the question. <laughs> um, no, so outside uh, work, I edit uh, the ACS census. <laughs> no, um, I'm, I like to be pretty active. Um, uh, I like to run a lot, so that most mornings I run. But um, for holidays, we really, uh, my wife and I, we both like to do multi-day hikes. So where we walk uh, for several days to get somewhere. Um, one of the key aspects of that is there is no internet. So I cannot be hassled during those times. That, that's pretty good. Um, and so... This year, we're, or next year, we're going to, we're hoping to do John Muir Trail, which some of you may know of. It's a walk from Yosemite Valley all the way th through the Ansel Adams Wilderness to um, Mount Whitney. Um, takes about 20 days, so there will be a lot of emails at the end. Um, because, you know, the US, we've walked a lot of New Zealand, a lot of Australia, and the US has some absolutely magnificent national parks, and we really want to see all of those as well. You mean I wasn't speaking an American accent? <laughs> um, hey, y'all, what are you doing out there? <laughs> but actually, uh, um, you, you, I got a little bit of warning, so I thought we should have one American accent that's topical for the venue, and uh, that is... Uh, uh, hang on, I've got to remember how to do this. Uh, uh, fellow sense of scientists, don't ask 
what ACS Census can do for you. Ask what you can do for ACS Census. <laughs> that was great. <laughs>